In the news at noon, federal government approves extension of deadline for NIN-SIM data verification to July 26. A Kwaibom State House of Assembly passes into law bill seeking to establish a Kwaibom State Audit Service Commission. Ipa Road Ravine worsens as residents lament threat to life. On the foreign scene, former South African President Jacob Zuma sentenced to 15 months in prison. In sports, Copper America quarter-final fixtures released. Details coming up shortly. Good afternoon and welcome to the News on Planet Radio 101.1 FM. Oh yo, my name is Saviour Robert. We begin the news this afternoon with a report that the Aquaibum State House of Assembly has passed into law a bill seeking to establish the Aquaibum State Audit Service Commission. Offices of the Auditor General for the State and Local Government Areas and other matters connected therewith. The bill was passed after a comprehensive report on the bill was presented before the House by the Dr. Charity Doe-led Public Account Committee. Ido, who is the member for Ukanafun and chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of the House, while presenting the report, underscored what the bill was set to achieve when passed into law. According to the lawmaker, the law will, apart from laying a foundation for the establishment of an audit service commission in the state, the offices of the Auditor General for the state and local government areas also provide a template for property, transparency and accountability in the public service com corporate accounts auditing and administration. Speaker Nyekan Bassi, while moderating the amendments of the bill at the Committee of the Whole, ratified it and passed into law. The bill, which was sponsored by the state government and presented by the House leader Udo Kirian Akban, seeks to repeal the audit law Cap 17 Laws of Aquabum State 2000. It will usher in a law in tandem with current trends and realities. Away from that, residents of Iqbal Road, commercial motorists and passers-by and onlookers have called on the Aquabum State Government to urgently intervene in the Iqbal Road ravine spot that has completely caved in, putting lives and property at risk. Speaking with Planet News at the affected site, respondents lamented how long the place has been in existence, saying intervention work was long overdue. You know, this place has been has a problem for over a decade now. So this uh, morning rain just um, destroyed the whole place. Now, if you stand by the other side, you will see that the whole road, this uh, road, is totally condemned. And even the houses, all the houses around here is not safe. This road has caught since a long time. If you won't go to Plaza now, it's a long process. You go turn, Itam Junction, road no day here right now. Some years back, I used to see some group of people. They will come and video and video and video and they will go back. But we have not seen any changes. Please, our government should help us because as it is now, it's going to sink down some houses. They called on government to come to the rescue residents, saying it was a disaster waiting to happen. According to them, there is another portion linking Kalabai to Road and Uraikba that is also badly damaged with urgent need of intervention. I'm begging government to come and see what they can do in order to save life and property also. Because people are passing here, to school children, primary school, secondary school people, even the junior students here, because this is the only shortest road for them. This road now is linked to a lot of places. I, I just beg government to come and fix this road. Please, we are pleading with our government, because it's not only here, the other side that is leading to the Ikba, it's still the same thing. So as it is now, we don't have a um, Ikba road again. Please, our government should help us out. Meanwhile, commercial keke riders observed that entering Iqbal Road will now be long and expensive for passengers as they would now have to link up to Iqbal Road through Kalabai 2 Highway. There is no road for me to pass down, so I have to go to turn to Iqbal Road. So I just I have to drop my passengers and turn to the other side because I will not be able to cross here. No Malay people, people because of the AKV road, I will do on the on then where's the break down again for poor God because now someone get to get to go. I will make an idea on it for this time. See that if you are giving and there's no way in the big enough. Rather young be well, they're gonna be now no fun. 
From the national scene, the federal government has announced the extension of the deadline for NINSIM data verification. The Director of Public Affairs, Nigerian Communications Commission, Ikechiku Adinde, disclosed this in a statement stating that the verification would continue till July 26 this year. According to the statement, the decision to further extend the deadline was made based on a re request by stakeholders in need to continue the NINSIM verification process following the rapid increase in the number of enrollment systems across the country. The statement also quoted the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Pentami, as thanking Nigerians for their patience and compliance with the federal government's directive on the NINSIM registration exercise. In the meantime, the federal government has announced a ban on travelers arriving from five African countries as part of the measures to, for mitigating a potential third wave of COVID-19. The countries are South Africa, Uganda, Rwanda, Namibia and Zambia. The chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee PSC on COVID-19, Bas Mustafa, who announced the measure at a press briefing in Abuja, also announced the extension of measures taken few weeks ago, denying entry into Nigeria for passengers who had visited Brazil, Turkey and India within 14 days preceding their arrival to the country. Mustafa said the ban on visit from those countries shall now be extended by another four weeks before it is subjected to further evaluation. Mustafa, who is the secretary to the government of the federation, said the decision was warranted by the prevalence of variants of concern and the dangers associated with the importation of such virulent strains to Nigeria. He expressed concern that South Africa, for example, recorded over 100,000 cases of COVID-19 infections in the last one week, while 20,000 was recorded in the last 24 hours. He urged members of the public not to allow their guards yet because of reported spikes in some countries and the emergence of variants of concern in several jurisdictions where the third wave has occurred. From the petroleum sector, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC has said there was no plan to increase the official pump price of the premium motor spirits PMS, otherwise known as petrol, from 162 Naira in July. The group managing director GMD of NNPC Melikiari who stated this during an interview, however, noted that engagements were still ongoing with the organized labor to arrive at the appropriate price of the petroleum product, stating that until both parties arrive at a conclusion, the current price remains. According to him, President Mohamed Bahari instructed the cooperation not to make petrol price out of reach of Nigerians, especially at this moment. To the judiciary now, where a federal high court sitting in Lagos has fixed October 7 to hear a motion seeking the final forfeiture of the sum of $5.78 million and $2.4 billion Naira linked to a former First Lady Patience Jonathan. Justice Tijani Rinjim fixed the date after taking arguments from counsel to the parties in the matter. In 2017, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC filed the application for forfeiture before Justice Mojishola Olatoregun. The defendants in the suit were Mrs. Jonathan alongside Lawari Furniture and Beths. Justice Olatoregun had on April 26, 2017 ordered the temporary forfeiture of the monies sequel to an expert ex parte application by the EFCC. The judges order was affirmed by both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. You are listening to the news on Planet Radio 101.1 FM. Let's take a breather and then bring you more stories from the foreign sports and entertainment scenes. Do stay with us. So my son, welcome to the Kalangulu Shrine. The gods are with us. What can I do for you? Baba, the way you do me, oh. Ah. And I even sick, self. I think say him give me HIV. Eh? No. What, what do you mean, Baba? No way anybody fit to use which give you HIV. If anybody tell you that one, na lie them talk. Because which no fit give person HIV. No matter how the wind's strong, nobody fit give or carry HIV from witchcraft. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks for staying with us now on to the foreign scene was South. Former South African President Jacob Zuma has been sentenced to 15 months in prison for contempt of court. Judge C.C. Kampepe said Zuma was found guilty of contempt of court following his refusal to appear before a graft panel. Recall that the 79-year-old Zuma was forced to step down as president in 2018 over corruption allegations. The former president had defied an order by the Constitutional Court in January to appear at an inquiry into corruption while he was president. Elsewhere, rebel forces in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region have retaken its capital Mekele, sparking street celebrations and forcing officials to flee. Residents reported scenes of joy with fireworks and thousands waving flags. The government, which took Michele in November after rebels rejected political reforms and captured army bases, has now called a humanitarian ceasefire in the region. The fighting has left thousands dead and has pushed 350,000 towards famine. More than 2 million people have been displaced. In sports, the eight countries that qualified for the quarterfinal of the ongoing Copper America have been confirmed following the conclusion of the group stage fixtures in the early hours of today. Uruguay defeated Paraguay 1-0 to book their place in the Copper America quarterfinal, while Argentina beat Bolivia 4-1 to also qualify for the last eight. The eight countries are Peru, Paraguay, Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, Colombia, Argentina and Ecuador. The quarterfinal will start on Friday and end on Sunday. In the fixtures, Peru will face Paraguay, Brazil goes up against Chile, Uruguay face Colombia, while Argentina lock horns with Ecuador. And on the entertainment scene, English singer and songwriter Ed Sheeran has revealed that he penned down 25 songs a week during his hiatus. The 30-year-old superstar who took some time off to spend quality time with his baby daughter Lyra, who was born in September 2020, said he continued to work on new music and ended up writing two albums during his downtime. Meanwhile, reports say the Grammy winner had some songwriting sessions with Sir Elton John. It's been the news on Planet Radio 101.1 FM. We hope, but before we go, a quick recap of the major stories. The federal government has announced the extension of the deadline for NIN SIM data verification to July 26 this year. Aquabum State House of Assembly has passed into law a bill seeking to establish the Aquabum State Audit Service Commission, offices of the Auditor General for the state and local government areas, and other matters connected therewith. Residents of Ipai Road commercial motorists, passers by, and onlookers have called on the Aquabum State government to urgently intervene in the Ipai Road ravine spot that has completely caved in, putting lives and property at risk. On the foreign scene, we told you that former South African President Jacob Zuma has been sentenced to 15 months in prison for contempt of court. And in sports, reported that the eight countries that qualified for the quarterfinal of the ongoing Copa America have been confirmed following the conclusion of the group stage fixtures in the early hours of today. For comments and coverage of a newsworthy event, do call our newsroom on 0812-770-29. Four zero. Visit our website on Planet One Hundred One FM. That ng, and and also like our Facebook page at Planet One Hundred One FM. Uyo. The news was edited by Jane Uwa. As we end the news, take this message: Do not be a pessimist. Stop seeing difficulty when chances beckon. Always strive for the best, no matter the hurdles. My name is Savior Robert. Wishing you. A terrific afternoon.